to our MBA podcast purpose is to help existing business owners grow their companies past the $10 million in revenue per year benchmark. Here is your host, Stephen Halasnik. Welcome, everyone. My name is Stephen Halasnik, and I am co-founder of Financing Solutions. Over the last 25 years, I've built six companies in the $5 million to $25 million range. And I can't tell you how important it is for businesses to have a line of credit so they can make an investment in their business or even for unexpected emergencies. Our line of credit program is easy to get in place, inexpensive when used, and costs nothing to set up, making it a great cash backup plan. If you would like to learn more about our line of credit program, please visit us at fscreditline.com. That's FS as in Financing Solutions, creditline.com, or give us a call at 862-207-4118. If you apply today, we will even give you a $250 credit on file that you can use when you use your line of credit. Just remember, the time to set up a line of credit is when you don't need it, so that when you, you do need it, it is ready to go and it is proved. Uh, I can't tell you how many times in my 25-year career that I was so happy <laughs> that I had a cash backup plan in a line of credit. Today, I am very excited to be speaking with Buzz. His real name is Michael Bazinski, but he goes by Buzz from Buzzworthy Integrated Marketing. Uh, Buzz is president and CMO of Buzzworthy Website Marketing is a lifelong entrepreneur, digital marketing thought leader, and best-selling author. Dubbed a visionary marketer by American Marketing Association, uh, Buzz's sole mission is to help entrepreneurs avoid the time drain and frustration of managing profitable digital marketing campaigns. Buzz, as most call him, has simplified digital marketing success with the rule of 26 and is on a marketing mission or on a mission to double the website revenue of service-centric businesses across America. Buzz, welcome to today's Entrepreneur MBA podcast. Thanks a lot, Stephen. It's good to be here. So uh, certainly what's intriguing is this whole idea behind the rule of 26, right? So, you know, I, I'm, uh, I don't know if that's going to mean 26 different things you need to do. Uh, uh-huh. I don't know if that means that you found this when you were 26 years old. <laughs> I don't know if it means that you were on Route 26 when you figured out this whole idea. But today's topic of doubling website revenue for service-centric businesses using the rule of 26 certainly has me intrigued. Awesome. That's good to hear. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so just start off by uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit a uh, snapshot as to into this topic of using the rule of twenty six. So yeah. So let's go and start. Just get the the cat out of the bag. What is the rule of twenty six? The rule of twenty six is a fifteen second marketing strategy that any service centric business can use to increase their website revenue or the revenue that they are garnering from their website specifically by 100%, doubling the revenue, okay? And the rule of 26 merely states that if you increase your traffic, your website traffic by 26%, your conversion rate by 26%, and the average value per client by 26% each, you will double, and it's a compound in effect, but you will double the revenue from your website. Yeah, I'm intrigued. I, uh, you know, in 2021, I wanted to double the amount of SEO visitors to my website that we were getting, mm-hmm. and uh, and we we went up 25. percent And uh, and so you know, I w- I wasn't happy, but my SEO consultant that I work with was like, "That's really good." And so you know, uh, being a high achiever, I didn't think it was. You know, so I guess well, hundred percent my- more organic traffic is a huge undertaking, and but that's what I go for. Huge right? over, you know, right? You know. But but we find that purely increasing traffic does not always increase right. revenue. And so, in the rule of twenty six, was really trying to do is boil down the three KPIs or the key performance indicators from the website from anybody's website that will really move the revenue needle. See, marketers love KPIs because KPIs can are just like statistics. I can tell you whatever you want 
Um, there's a quote that says there are lies, there are damn lies, and then there are statistics because you can tell whatever story you want from those statistics. And so I am more in tune with the revenue or the ROI that marketing is supposed to create so that we understand that marketing is an investment, not an expense. Because most of the service-based business I've come across have had bad experiences with marketers. And over the years, I continue to hear, well, word of mouth and referrals is how I build my business. I was like, that's just a horrible business plan because you are now at the whim of other people building your business. And that's nowhere to be as an entrepreneur. Yeah. And, you know, I've been doing this a long time too. And, you know, I always, you know, you, I, you know, you do this inversion. So you have, uh, what's the most important thing for me? And that is, uh, in marketing, right. And that is landing a profitable client, right? That's the number one that goes on the top of the KPI sales, right? right? Yep. <laughs> well, you know, that goes on the top. And, and then, and then you start working your way down. Right. And I've learned this over, like, I remember when we first got, I got involved in SEO 20 years ago, like when we first came out, I was, I've always been involved in it. That's always been a big lead generation for us. But, um, but, uh, you know, when I first started, it was like, oh, how many people do I have visiting my website? That's, that's, that was the thing. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And then I, at the end of the day, I looked at them like, well, wait a minute, they didn't convert. Right. So, you know, th that's just like pie in the sky stuff, right? Yeah, right. Conversion, you know, conversion yeah. optimization stuff. So, you know, you kind of learn, you go back the other direction and you say, okay, this is what I'm looking for. Like, what would I rather have? I, I, you know, after the next level down, I'd like to have pe only people visiting my website who are serious, who are in our demographic of the people that would convert. Right. Qualified, qualified prospects, qualified prospects. Right. That's what I, you know, you know, that's really better. So right. anyway, let's get that's back. What, to and we talk about that in the book is like getting the right traffic. Not all traffic is good traffic and bad traffic does drive down your conversion rate. And, and, and that creates this frustration you just talked about. And so the book really goes through those three steps in doubling your revenue by exploring how do we, one, define good traffic, how do we identify it, and then how do we track it to make sure we're getting the right ones. And then we look at tactics on how to increase the, the conversion rate. So what are you doing on your website that is compelling a qualified lead to take action and deterring a bad lead? from taking inaction because the time wasted with a bad lead is an opportunity cost that co that can really bankrupt a business, especially small businesses. You know, if you're in that 500,000 to $100,000 range, you don't have a lot of resources when it comes to time in your company. You don't have a lot of people to, to, to delegate to and all those things. And so every phone call means less time in your day. And to me, that's, it's frustrating for one, it's a waste of time and we can't buy time back. We can always make more money, but we can't buy more time. So really making sure that we're attracting the right people to take that action is like one of my most important things when it comes to traffic, because it really helps drive a better conversion rate. So if we're driving good traffic, we can actually be helping our second KPI, which is conversion rate, uh, before we even start on it. Yeah. Well, how come you, when you, when, when we, uh, when you came up with your suggested title, you use the idea of service centric businesses instead of like, you know, product central businesses. Um, because I have a passion for service, service based businesses. Um, uh, there are a million people out there who love to push products and there are a million products to push. And it's just not something that excites me. I, I feel that the personalities, each person out there serving the public uh, for profit has a unique selling proposition. And that unique story makes every one of my clients a new experience. And I love that about the working in the service centric uh, arena. Um, I would be completely bored and out of my mind if I had to sell widgets all day. Because really all you're doing is, is looking at the next uh, client or the, yeah, the next purchase, how many times can we sell it? Is it something that we can subscribe to? And it's a formula and I get it. And, and there are people who are really good at it and they're very passionate about it and they love those numbers. I like the numbers of lifetime value. 
which is the third KPI of the rule of 26. Yeah. How do we enrich our clientele to then come back and be uh, an investment that pays off for years to come or maybe into a higher value echelon where they're spending more money with me. They're coming in and getting more of my services. They're not just referring, they're advocating for me. They're willing to go out there and predictably refer for me. Those types of relationships, those lifelong relationships, to me, that's just much more rewarding. I have clients I've had for 16 years. And I've, I've taken them from the phone book all the way up. And now we're looking at NFTs, right? So it's like it's, the, the lifelong ba- uh, adventure I've had with clients is, is it just, it keeps me fresh. It keeps me young and it keeps me excited. Well, it's also very, uh, uh, it's a great, uh, uh, narrow is not the right word. It's, uh, you know, everyone is that when you're in business long enough, you know uh, that you want to, you don't want to be everything to everybody. You want to be, especially as a small business, right? So right. And, and I'm talking about in your case, uh, where, you know, you, you really kind of picked a market that really people are not doing as much. I think a lot of people who spend money on in marketing are going to be spending it if it's a product-based business because they they generate all the revenue from ads usually. Yeah. Yeah. Ads, so, you know, right. And it's like, and, and pushing ads is great. And, and people, you know, make a lot of money doing that, making other people money through ads. And that's great. But when service based businesses, we have a story to tell. And that story is unique every time. And that authority building that happens in the service uh, arena is so much more intricate and can be very exciting. Um, every, I, I work with a lot of CPAs, and people think CPAs are not very interesting. But I have a fractional CFO that I just uh, brought on about 90 days ago, and he's starting from scratch. He had built a $20, $30 million company. He was the CFO of that company. Now he wanted to help other contractor companies do the same thing. And so we created a framework that was unique to him. And the first time he was able to do a keynote was like within the first 30 days of us even creating this framework for him to talk about what he does and show people what it is. Um so that they could do it themselves or come back to him and uh, and have him do it for them, right? So you we're always able to give all this value and tell that story there. He just called me um, last week and said, oh, by the way, I just uh, closed my first two clients, um, combined over $100,000 in revenue in their, his first two clients. That to me is exciting. Yeah. Selling 100,000 widgets that yeah. to people I don't know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> so let's let's, you know address this head on. And that is, you know, if you're our listeners right now are listening, they're saying to themselves, listen, I completely agree with you. You like, you know, KPIs focusing, but it's like, like, listen, I personally am a, I'm a marketing guy. Okay. That's, Mm -hmm. that's what I do 90% Mm -hmm. of the day. Mm -hmm. But even I get, um, find the shiny new objects constantly. Right. Right. Even I, who, who am a marketing guy get easily distracted and I happen to be a volume guy. So I happen to say is let me throw as much as I can in the top of that funnel. Mm-hmm. And what comes out at the bottom is clients and it, it works in our, it works for our company. But of course I would love to have be more efficient and effective. So number one off, how can you be more effective in marketing and spend less time on it? That's a really good question. And it's one of the most important questions in marketing that I ask all of my new clients. And the answer to that is to niche, to really Mm -hmm. get specific about your most perfect, your ideal client, right? Um, I hate the word avatar, but the avatar, that's what people use nowadays to, to describe, right? Some people will go as far as drawing the picture of what that person looks like. What do they have for breakfast? All these other things. I don't think you need to necessarily go that deep, but to understand where does your most rewarding and profitable relationships lie with your customers? So easiest thing for an established business is who are your most profitable customers? The people who pay you the most for the least amount of effort, right? 
the people who allow you to leverage your, your expertise in what you provide and, and pay you what you're worth. Those two variables will dictate who that is. And if you tell your story around that person's pain and how you can help alleviate that pain or help them attain that dream, because that's the only two things services do. We either alleviate pain, you know, solution-based, or dreams. We help you obtain your dreams. That's it. Okay? So your story needs to be very specific to that yeah. person, to that pain or dream, and that's all you do. When you do that, you get rid of all of this noise in your marketing, and you get very concise of what you do. If you go to my website today, you will see that our slogan, it's not even a slogan, it says what we do. We do website marketing for service-based businesses. That We're experts at that. That's what we do. Okay. Are there a lot of things that go into that? Yes, but we don't need to get into that right away. We can get that later on when it needs to come up, right? The next thing, what's my ethos? The rule of 26. I keep it simple. How do you work with us? There's three ways to work with us. That's it. After that, it's like, do you want to talk or not? Right? Are you having these problems across the top? It says I need, and there's six things I can easily identify you probably need. And if you identify with one of those needs, you're going to click on and read more. And if, if you like what you read, you're going to contact me. Done. The majority of your, uh, I don't know if you, do you actually get into the solution? So uh, I, I guess that one of the big part of your consulting is you are helping clients to remind them and that they uh, need to find who their perfect client is. Sometimes. Like, that's Sometimes that's the biggest well, hurdle. Yeah, I would think that's <laughs> a lot of it, right? Um, I, I was just thinking, I'm trying to jumping ahead to the solution. And then what I was going to ask you is, is the majority of your marketing uh, solutions SEO? Is it pay-per-click? Is it direct mail? Is it uh, uh, trade publications? Is it, you know, it, you know, and I know you're going to say, you're going to say yes, but no, I'm no, not going to say yes. I'm not no. going to say yes. No, but, I'm not going to say yes. Uh, in today's it, world, yes. is it mostly SEO, SEM? No. And yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. tricky. So, so let me clarify. Yeah. Mark, a digital marketing is an ecosystem. And yeah. if you put all of your eggs in one basket, as we just saw recently when the iOS privacy update came out and everybody who was leaning on Facebook ads alone I died. Heard. Yeah. Died. Yeah. Like I had agencies, agency friends up on the West Coast. They're like, went from $100,000 a month in uh, service fees to zero. Because yeah. they couldn't produce the conversions, right? Because they had all their eggs in one basket. So for me, I think that each client has different needs. So yes, are we going to use SEO? Of course. It's organic inbound traffic that it over time creates free uh, free uh, leads. Really, technically, right? They're, they're coming in and you can actually start predicting those. Then if you want to push the gas, then you look at paid. Because you're either working with time or money. So people who don't have a lot of cash flow, we have to look at the organic stuff that you have to do to gain that authority and the visibility on search engines. If you have cash flow and you're ready to go faster, then we push both. We do a little, we do uh, SEO and paid ads. Is it going to be on social media or is it going to be on SEM? Depends on what you're selling and who you're selling it to, right? And you got to find that. And as we establish that, of course, we're going to try to get people into our email ecosystem so that we can continue to talk to them depending on who they are. Do I need an email from my dentist every month? Eh, depends on what kind of dentist it is, but nine times out of 10, my dentist is not going to write that email. So it doesn't really matter to collect that email in that campaign, right? So yes and no. So let's repeat that rule of 26 again, slowly. Okay. okay. All right. So we're going to increase unique traffic, website traffic to your website by 26%. Then we're going to increase the conversion rate of that traffic by 26%. Okay. And we're then going to increase the average value per client that you get by on your website by 26%. So 78% increases create 100% more revenue. So why why did you pick the number 26 versus 25, which would be a rounded number? Because I get the rounded number of double the output. 
when I did the math, I wanted to see, I wanted to figure out how to double somebody's revenue from their Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. 26% became the mathematical solution. Yeah. So I'm actually wasn't, I was pretty close to the idea that I doubled my SEO traffic by 25%. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, uh, and, uh, you know, it depends on the year when I, you know, about our growth pattern. Uh, we, we had a huge growth in the last year. Um, uh, but the year before we went way down, uh, because of, uh, because of, uh, COVID. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it wasn't, a, it wasn't a bad thing. It was just principle, principle of money out, uh, went down, uh, uh, because people just weren't using their lines of credit. So, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and then, and then they came storming back. So, um, anyway, uh, so when, when you're meeting a client for the first time mm-hmm. and you understand, let's get past the point where you understand their business. Sure. Okay. What is typically the area that you have to focus their energy on? So I usually, when we're, we're, we're utilizing the rule of 26 specifically, I usually start with the last KPI that we dis- we discussed was the average value, lifetime value. Yeah. So I was working, I'm going to go back to the CFO I was just working with because he's fresh in my mind. When he first came to me, he was t- thinking about uh, charging about $1,500 to $2,000 a month for his services. His target market was t- uh, contractors um, that were doing at least $10 million in revenue a year. Okay. So when I'm talking to a CEO and I'm telling them I'm going to double their profitable cash flow at $10 million revenue piece, and I see a widget or a service that's only $1,500 a month, I'm not going to see as much value there. And as a service provider, I'm not charging enough for my times. Therefore, I have to have more clients and therefore giving less service, right? So we can go broke giving value, right? Or we can make people rich by exceeding value, regardless of what we charge. And so I usually find that once we understand who we're we're talking to, finding out exactly what that lifetime value should be for that client. Because if you're providing a service that is enriching their lives, whether it be time or money, you need to get paid for that expertise. Because I don't know about you, I've got 30 years of experience behind what I teach or consult my clients with, right? So a a $1,500 does not reflect 30 years of experience in education, right? Yeah, it's been my experience that small businesses don't char- they, they don't charge enough. Right? That's been my experience. They don't charge enough. And in fact, they don't you I even use that, you know, uh you know, I have a little bit more of a product than a service. So, it's a little you know, it's a little different in my scenario, but um the Oh, you're a service based. Yeah, I'm a service. Banking oh. is banking and, and loans are service based. There's yeah, there's yeah, a but- tangible product you get from that service. Yeah, but you have a service there. There's customer service, definitely. Yeah, it, it makes it smaller. You know, if, if you the way we run our, our our company, it's it's it is pretty automated after you become a client. So, right, um, fair enough. Um, but again, if you're a service based business like a consultant or something like that, you know, I, mm-hmm. I I've always felt that people don't charge enough, and I think no. and but 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 let me ask you this: out of ten clients that you are starting to work with and getting to know. Mm-hmm. Uh, my venture to guess is 9.9 of them <laughs> do not know their their uh, how much money they make off their clients. Like yeah. if they're, uh, they're, yeah. Yeah. They don't understand the gross profit, their no. their true revenue, right? Yeah. Because there's cost of sales. Yeah. And and we have to understand those. So that's one of the things that we look at because if you're going to invest in marketing, you need to understand what your uh, – your margins are. If you understand your margins, how do you know how much you are going to invest into something? Because you can spend too much in marketing and go broke growing your business. Believe me, I did it for the first five years of mine. Yeah. And I I think the other, uh, if you really, if you're really good at marketing, you also learn if you have different channels on how you acquire clients, right? How much you make off of each channel. All right. And, and, And always testing new channels. So yes. uh, I see one of the biggest 
uh, mistakes I see with successful folks. So they're, especially when they're they're approaching that $1 million mark, they start seeing the growth kind of getting exponential, but they what they don't realize is that they probably are only utilizing one to two channels when they should be uh, optimizing one to two channels while testing three to four other channels along with it. Because at some point, those channels are going to fail to provide, right? Back in the aughts, we saw the death of the phone book, okay? I had a landscaping client. It is still a client today. I actually do three of his businesses now. And he went from 7 million to 11 million in the birth of the internet, when internet marketing actually started getting teeth, about 2006, 2007. By 2000, when I came to him, he had a double truck, which means two full page ads in this phone book. And he spent $5,000 a month on that thing. And him and his wife brought me in and his wife's like, I need help. I says, what's going on? He's spending $5,000 on a phone book. I said, phone book's dead. I said, you will not see phone books in people's offices by 2008. I was, I was all year off is 2007 when they all disappeared. Okay. But at that time I had to convince him that that $5,000 was going to make him a lot more money uh, in more places. We we're going to be able to take that same amount of money and test different channels and then find out what the winner is and then continue to test and test. And then when we find losers, we let them go and we find something else and test and test while this is still going, we're good. And then you're going to find a new winner and you start testing them together and you find out who's the better winner and you start putting more effort in than that until it stops working as well while you're testing. So that's why marketing is always ongoing. You're always looking at new strategies. You're all look, always looking at new tactics. So, I, you know, when, when you and I first started talking, I was thinking that, oh, you're helping consult with the business owners of the smaller, these smaller businesses, right? But then it dawned on me, I'm like, because yeah, I know the biggest problem is, you, you know, listen, one, you may not be a mark, uh, the, the business owner may not be a marketing person. Number two, we, <laughs> you know, yeah. Number two, there's, they're being pulled everywhere. Right. So they're being, you're doing a half-ass effort on marketing, mm-hmm. even if you really are a marketing person like me. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm thinking now that what businesses do, that they actually outsource their marketing to you. Is that accurate? A hundred percent. We actually have three types of clients that we work with. We have their do-it-yourselfers, and we actually have provided a a basically curated a a few uh, software as a service um, platforms to help them with their social media marketing, their SEO, maybe some Google ads, those types of things, right? So there are the people with more money than uh, more time than money. Then I have the people who have more money than time. Those people want me to get it done for them because they know that my dedicated team is going to do better than they can do on their own. And it's going to free them up to do what they really are passionate about and where their time is best spent. And I have the people who don't have, they have just as much money as they have time. And so we have to do it with them. And so we utilize those, those software platforms and we do some coaching along with it to help them through that. In each of those, the DIY and the DWI, obviously we want, we want to see them grow to the point where they go, you know what? We don't have time for this anymore. We want to see what you can do with it. And then we run with it. Okay. Um, After you start working with a client after, let's say, six months, Mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming that what you're working with is identifying KPIs. Like you said, um, you know, we, we saw, we talked about how much money you're making off of each client to get that handle down. What's the next evolution of a client after they've started to get their KPIs down? When they start seeing return on investment, um, now it's a matter of scalability, right? So we track everything so we can identify it. There's a saying that says 50% of your marketing is working. Most people just don't know which 50% is actually working, right? And so my job is to show my clients what is working and what is not. And it's at around six months, three to six months sometimes, as little as three if we're doing advertising um, and less organic, um, we start looking at scalability. All right, we're getting X amount of clients for uh, Y amount of investment. How much more do you want to invest? Or are we getting the right clients? Are we? Uh, is the marketing getting the perfect client? So now we're in that tweak mode, right? So it's like, yes, we're getting the perfect clients every time. This is awesome. Or 90% of the time, whatever it looks like, right? I need 25% more of those. Okay, great. 
We'll say that because you never want to get more business than you can handle because you're going to lose more business by doing that. You will actually grow yourself broke, right? So my job is to do uh, profitable growth, measured growth, and we work through that. Some of my clients look at it and say, hey, I want to do less clients. So then we start tweaking their marketing to get higher paying clients, right? And so we're looking at their 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 uh, their value ladder and we're saying, hey, well, you know what? We want people to come up a couple more steps in. We don't want to start so low. We want to come in a little bit higher. So like when I first started, I would work with a business who was just, you know, got somebody who just figured out that they could get a business license for a hundred bucks and they had no plan. And they, and they meant they had no money and I would work with those people and I almost worked myself broke doing that. Now I work with businesses that are doing at least $500,000 in revenue a year. And I really, my sweet spots are a million and above because they've established a lot of things that don't already work, which shortcuts what can work. So at that six month mark, we're doing that all over again. We're saying, hey, what direction do you want the next year to look like? And now we start looking at years versus months. Okay. Uh, well, where do you think your company's going after now? After the pandemic? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wasn't thinking after pandemic. I was thinking, you know, you've built this good practice. You're very, uh, you have a really defined niche. You know who your clients are. Um, is it just a matter of just keep doing what you're doing? It's a matter of, so I have a personal mission to teach more people to be able to do what I do as a strategist, right? Um, so that we can help even more people. So there's a, I hate to use the word scale, but there's a scale involved, right? I, what I want to do is disrupt the digital marketing world by showing the people ROI, most digital marketing firms are, you're just a number, right? They're just trying to make their margins and the salespeople got to make their commissions and the other people need to hit their KPIs to keep their job and the CEO gets paid on dot, 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 right? I want to flip that and say, hey, listen, we take care of the client. I want to make as many millionaires as possible. And I'm not talking millionaires in revenue. I'm talking millionaires in pockets, profitable millionaires, right? Because there, I am sick and tired of looking at poverty in the entrepreneur sector. And so I want to eradicate poverty in entrepreneurs, period of story. And the only way I can do that is to educate and show and make that available to more and more people. Yeah. I, a number of years ago, I was working with this um, SEO company, uh, not working with them. I was interviewing this SEO company. Um, I think I happen to know the owner pretty well. And I said to him, um, why don't you, you know, he was telling me about his problems a little bit about clients and stuff like that. And I said, why don't you go to your client and say, how much money do you make off of each client that you get? Right. And, and let's say that they know that, right. Mm -hmm. Then go back to them and say is, Okay. Instead of you paying me, you paying a flat rate to me, mm -hmm. right? $3,000 a month, $6,000 a month, whatever it mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. for, for me to help you get your SEO, uh, natural searches, um, to working, uh, say to them, every time you get a client, you pay me X and like he understood the value of it. Mm -hmm. but he, he, nobody wants to go there as an SEO performance company. Based, so performance based. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, this uh, isn't, yeah. uh, this isn't something that's revolutionary. No, no. Right. No. Of course but not. But it's, it's scary. It's scary. But, for a lot of yeah. Time. But it, but the, the, the best thing about it is it keeps everybody on the same alignment. Sure. Right. Right. Because, you know, maybe you could get me all this SEO traffic, but nobody converts. Right. Um, or, you know, so to me, it's like, plus it's, uh, it's everyone's in alignment. It's also a win-win scenario that really focuses everybody's attention. And if you do your job really well as an SEO company, you know, I, SEO, SEM, you know, sure. um, then you win, you win more and you have a you client do. because the problem was turn. 
right? right. SEO right. people, you, they're there for a year or they're there for two years, your client is, and then they forget why you're, you know, what you're, it, it's, it's hard. They're to not evaluate. doing their job as SEOs is what yeah, yeah, it really know. is. So there's, think- two, there's two reasons why SEO specifically and SEM specifically um, don't like for service-based businesses for products. Easy sales is sale. I get a percentage uh, yeah. of your sales. I'll do, I'll do performance-based any day. Mm-hmm. Right. Cause I know what my, my, I know ROI what you're going to say, but go does, ahead. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But as an SEO, you might not have control of the CR, the, the conversion rate, because you might not have control of the website the way you want. Okay. Yeah. And even if you do say you're now a fractional CMO and you're like, Hey, I'm going to do performance based. What happens when the marketing hits sales and sales are, are not very good and I, they I don't need, know how yeah. to close anything. Yeah. So I'm giving you all these qualified leads and you're just going, and then the sales guy's going, it's his fault. And the marketing's like, no, it's his fault. And now you got these fingers pointed this way. Right. So, I've been looking on the paid side. It's much easier to say, Hey, by the way, I'm going to get paid per lead. You have a close rate of X. I'll, I will give you X amount of leads, um, on average. And if I exceed that, I'm going to get more, right? Usually in a paid situation, that's great. Search is a little bit different. Only do the fact that you can only scale search to whatever the search volume is. So if you're a company who is, um, seasonal, your SEO is going to be at the whim of that season and still be doing the same amount of work. Unfair to that guy, right? If you're paid, there's other ways to use paid. You don't always have to use that money in paid SEM. You can say, well, you know what? This is a slow month for search. So we're going to take your ad dollars. We're going to go over here and we're going to create demand, right? And now you can get there. So I agree. If you can find somebody who is SEO and is willing to uh, take a bet on your sales staff, Sure. If you're on product, do it because the good ones will because they know how much money they can make doing it. Well, I, I <clears throat> going back to the uh, original premise of that of that uh, equation, it was someone already you already know the true value of a client of a uh, client, mm-hmm. how much money it's making. So mm-hmm. that means that the model is already working, right? It's already working. So you're, now you're, I'm going to take that mo- So yes, yeah, so you, uh, I agree with you. You're, I understand what you're saying. Mm-hmm. That you say, well, is there salespeople there? Well, there's the website which I don't have control over as far as your marketing message, which still could be fixed through, right. you know. Can but be. but in general, you're still looking at a conversion mm-hmm. that we know it's already working. If you, know? you if you can get the conversion, yeah. So that's why I said if you can get paid by the lead then you're taking the risk. If you're, if you're only going to get yeah. paid by, right. by performance, right? My performance SEO is to get you tr- unique traffic to your website through search. That's my job, right? So if I'm only getting paid for that, then I should get paid for what SEO actually produces. SEO does not produce conversions. SEO does not produce close sales. There yeah. are two other people or things in the way of that sale, right? Um, especially in service customer service, returning phone calls, all that those things go into that variable. So if you take those variables out of that person's and you say, hey, listen, I'm going to increase your traffic. And for every visitor I get that has certain, and there's ways to identify a good visitor versus a bounce visitor and stuff like that and say, hey, for every one of those, I'm going to get five cents, 10 cents, whatever it looks like. And we're going to get you 10,000 visitors this month. That means you're going to pay me two thousand dollars, and if I give you fifteen thousand, you're going to give me twenty five hundred or uh, three thousand dollars. Yeah. So that. speaking of which, uh, do you bill your clients by the hour? Do you typically? I'm not asking how much. I'm just <laughs> asking. Do you do you bill them by the hour? Do you bill them by the project? Do you bill them on a retainer basis? How, how does it work? Nine times out of ten, we are brought in on a retainer basis and a flat rate. Okay. Uh, except for paid. If paids can scale up. So we have a finite uh, framework that we, we work with when we're talking content marketing and SEO. And so we go through that proven process that creates those outcomes. What we do is we allow the client to understand that they can actually get higher ROI over time because we're, we're going to work at a steady, well, we don't work at a steady pace. We're going to build at a steady pace. We do most of our work in the first three months. And then it kind of levels off, but then we keep going, right? We're talking about this, 
the testing. So now we're kind of in this analog state where we might be testing and then we're evaluating, testing, evaluating, testing, evaluating. So we're kind of going back and forth, but I've created a flat rate cost of that investment that they can see return on. And that's the biggest thing is I start with the return that we're looking to get. If that return is enough, and if you tell me, hey, I'm going to give you a dollar. Can you give me a dollar penny and a penny back? Can you can you do that? And I show you that I can. You're going to give me that dollar every time. You're going to give me $10 so you can get the 10 cents. You're going to give me $20 and so give me 20 cents. You know, it's, it's just that scalability. Once now, we figure that out. Are you doing the SEO work too? Mm-hmm. Or are you, are you outsourcing that to somebody mm-hmm. that you Everything's know? Everything's in-house. Everything so in the that. United States. Yeah. We're doing so, not, do, we do not take shortcuts. Uh, so are you shortcuts a, will, will cost you. Right. Are, are you a marketing company or are you a SEO, SEM company? We're a digital marketing company. And at, technically, we're an integrated marketing company, which okay. means we take the digital side of things and we integrate it with all the other marketing that's happening within a company. You ever have a client bring you on board just for the marketing and they do the SEO themselves or, or mm-hmm. somebody else? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, we're, we're a no ego zone. So we understand that an established company has relationships. Sometimes there's a brother involved that's, that's just is the SEO genius. And we're like, okay, great. We'll work with them to feed the other things we're going to do for that person. And then we are only billing for what they actually need instead of going, well, to be with us, you know, there's a $20,000, uh, you're with Buzzworthy uh, tax just to start talking to us. We don't do that. Like I'm more about the outcome than the prestige, the prestige, yeah, like yeah. my case studies and my testimonials, they speak for themselves. And so as while I have those uh, relationships with my clients and my team, technically my team has a relationship with those clients because of the ones who work with them every day right? It's not just me. You're not, I'm not the bottleneck of my company, right? I'm, I'm the face and I'm the mark, I'm the CMO and the president, right? But I have well-trained and very uh, talented people working on every aspect. I only hire experts in their fields and I let them do exactly what they do really well. We don't, we don't make people struggle in their weakness. We let them glow in their strengths. Um, what question? What question haven't I asked that you think is a good question to ask um, you? Um, you know, I mean, I could go on asking you questions for hours and hours and hours, right? You got good uh, questions. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, uh, I always have good questions. Uh, so, um, what what do you? Th- what's something we haven't covered that you think? You know, we have a couple minutes left, so okay. So, I think that the one question that companies ask or they fail to ask is when to bring on a firm like say Buzzworthy, right? So say you're at that 500,000 mark and you might've gotten some help here and there with an SEO or maybe somebody ran some ads and stuff like that, but, and everything's kind of hodgepodge, right? When is it profitable to bring on somebody like me? That's a good question. And I tell people when you have properly uh, budgeted for marketing, and understand the difference between sales and marketing and that you have resources to feed both because marketing without a good sales process and team is wasted money and a sales team without great marketing is a waste of money. They work hand in hand, but they are separate. So a lot of my clients have either a very strong sales team already and they're looking to get more qualified leads to that team so they can close more deals or they're looking to get better leads for their sales, right? And sometimes it's, you know, for chiropractors and stuff like that, it's not as much of a sales staff as it is just a support staff to answer the phone and answer the questions that people are going to have when they call a chiropractor, right? But then you, when you have service-based where there's a coach involved and the coach is only making money when they're coaching or the doctor's only making money when they're in the, in the operating room, then there's got to be those consultants behind them in the sales process. Yeah. And so I always tell people like, listen, don't go into debt to market and don't tell your salespeople or whoever's handling your sales that you're going to pay them more than you can actually afford. Good stuff. Well, that's, uh, that's, we're going to leave it off at that. Um, so, cause that, that, that's a good uh, place for us to go uh, for, or cool. to leave. Um, and uh but, you know, really good stuff. I learned a lot. Um, 
you know, I makes me, uh, I took a lot of notes about things that I want to do. <laughs> Good. Uh, yeah. So, and if you want to get more information on the rule of 26, you can go to uh, my, my website, which is buzzworthy.biz. And it's right there at the top. Like I mentioned earlier, buzzworthy is B U Z Z W O R T H Y dot B I Z. Good stuff. So, you know, again, I would like to thank so very much buzz, uh, uh, Michael Bazinski is uh, his, his full name from Buzzworthy Integrated Marketing for coming on to today's podcast. If you like today's podcast, please feel free to share it with a friend and also subscribe on your favorite podcasting app. And of course, if you're looking for a line of credit for your business, you can call us at 862-207-4118 or visit our website at fscreditline.com. Again, that's FS as in Financing Solutions creditline.com. Again, uh, Buzz, if people want to get a hold of you, how do they go about doing that? Go to buzzworthy.biz. Everything is all on that one website for you. Very good. And for all listeners out there, if you're interested in getting any new business ideas, I tweet daily about lessons for business owners at S Halasniks. That's my name. It's S and it's H-A-L-A-S-N-I-K. So I think the, the big thing that we all want to remember today is that You know, you got to be spending time on marketing. You got to understand your KPIs. You got to understand the true value of of your customers and how much money you make off them. And maybe even need to bring on a consultant like Buzz to kind of really help you. Um, I think you should take a look at their website. I know I'm going to do that after we hang up and take a a better look at it. So everybody, it's coming to the end of the year. I thought I was going to be happy to get rid of 2020. I'll be happy to get rid of 2021. (laughs) Everybody have a fantastic day.